This is Kerry Artek with Wicked Signal and today's video analysis on Adobe Inc, our symbol ADBE, was um, recorded on January 5th, 2021. That was a Tuesday. Um, if you don't know anything about Adobe, and I'm sure you do, uh, I know Adobe mostly from their uh, PDF software, but they're into lots of you know software-based uh, applications. They're an American multinational computer software company. Uh, they're incorporated in Delaware, headquartered in California, and historically have focused upon the creation of multimedia and creativity software products with more recent forays into digital marketing software. And that's about all I'm going to say about Adobe because this is all chart analysis, uh, which I'll be showing you in just a moment. Before I do so, though, let me once again remind you to please Tell your trader and investor friends about WickedSignal.com. Have them go to the free subscription link at the top of the home page. Provide their first name, last name, email address, and uh, they or you will receive an email each and every time a new video, a new stock has been analyzed and a video analysis is ready for viewing. I won't fill your inbox with marketing uh, offers and uh, I will not share your personal contact information with anyone outside of the organization. So let's take a look at Adobe. This is a fresh chart uh, and it's a weekly chart and it goes back over 30 years uh, and you can see the last four years especially have been in a progressively more vertical move to the upside. It may not be over. I'm going to show you that in a moment. There is a resistance area we're testing. Um, in fact, I'm going to zoom in on this red square area and just take a look at the last few years. You can see the weekly chart here it goes back to January of 18. And uh, I can recently, most recently, after the big move off the COVID low, I'll say in, in March, uh, we've been in sort of a um, congestive a descending channel structure, a descending flag, typically a setup for a bull move, but you don't play the bull move, you don't buy into it until uh, you actually settle above the flag, uh, or a, I just call these a descending channel top. Uh, that this week, Monday, January 4th, is at 501.96, and it drops four full weeks later, the week of Monday, February 1st, to 494.20. And so you can, as usual, subtract those out, divide by four, and you'll have the location of that channel top each and every week in between. If we close above that channel top, and I like to see these by at least 1% margins. In other words, uh, the 501.96 by at least $5 uh, which would put you at 506.96 and change somewhere in there. You can do the simple math. But holding below this area does allow, allow this rotational sequence to continue playing out. These lower lows, lower highs, uh, since the high was placed back in uh, August, late August, that high was 536.88. And so holding below that 501.96 channel top, does allow this market to fall back. I don't have a sell signal per se, but we may be in the midst of one right now, just having the looks as if we are going to close below the low of the recent high from uh, last week, that pullback high of 506.04. The low of that was 494.89. If we close below that, that in itself is a sign of weakness. But, you know, I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty. You can pull up the weekly chart yourself and take a look at those. If I'm just doing a basic, basic construction, it is to say holding below 501.96 does allow this market to fall back over the next month, two, three at the very most. I'm going to say three to five weeks by the end of Feb, down into the 422.62 region, which is dropping a bit every week. And once again, the channel bottom is in reach over the next three to five weeks or by the end of February. 422.62 this week, Monday, January 4th, drops to 415 and a quarter, a full four weeks later, the week of Monday, February 1st. And once again, you can subtract those out, divide by four, and you should be able to locate uh, where, the, where that channel bottom is each and every week. And that is an area that can contain monthly, possibly quarterly selling pressures if or when tested. What I like about that descending channel bottom in terms of bottom picking is the fact that it coincides with a former channel top that we actually settled above in the spring. 
uh, and that is that uh, I'm just giving you the one number of uh, the first week of February 425.94. And so you've got a range of support there. And it just it was rounded out into the four, if you will, all the way down to 415 and a quarter. That is an area that can absorb selling uh, on at least a monthly basis. Let's say that we test it in later February. It could certainly contain selling through the second quarter. And from there, we can push onward to new highs. Um, so that's the downside right now. And holding below that 50196 channel top I showed a few slides ago does allow that lower area. There's no good reason, in other words, in, from what I can see, to be a holder of a long position in Adobe through the first quarter until or unless we settle above the 50196 channel top or unless you want to bottom pick the 420s uh, over the next three to five weeks. Now, I'm going to zoom in again uh, on this chart and show you the what ifs uh, if we happen to settle above the 50196 channel top, which once again drops to 49420 the first week of February. And, um, and um, that would be uh, the 650s, 670s. It's just an ascending channel top, and that would be a classic target. Um, you know, that would be a significant rally, obviously, but this stock has done it before. You know, we've I think uh, it's it's more than quadrupled in price over the last two or three years. And so you can see these green arrows actually sort of illustrate that it's nothing more than a similar rally that we saw from the COVID low to the August high. And then a resumption of that with a settlement above the 50196 formation uh, should push us into the upper uh, 600s uh, within, you know, the timing of that. You know, it took from March to August uh, to do the first arrow. And uh, so what is that? Uh, April, May, June, July. That's about five months. So we could, if we settled, say, this week, Friday, above 501.96, uh, now you're talking um, February, March, April, May, May, June. Yeah, early summer, perhaps, where we could actually push into the upper $600 area. And in terms of um, percentage, I'm going to say that's at least a 30% rally, right? Something like that from present price levels. Um, so, you know, that is what I think is in the cards. Obviously, you know, you've got the old high in August at 536.88. That's likely to cause some sort of a double top scenario for a week, maybe two or three. But honestly, I think if we close above the 50196 formation, uh, this stock is poised for another round another phase of longer term buying pressures that should play out over the course of a half a year or so into the upper 600 area. And I think that's really all that needs to be expressed right now with this uh, particular Wicked Signal video on Adobe Inc.